out of begging. Welcome back to the channel guys. The Leave It On The Scale series is back and we are out here practicing for the first episode. My tournament is tomorrow. We're out here on Raystown Lake. If you're new to my channel and don't know what the Leave It On The Scale series is, it is my tournament series where I'm following along with me going from an amateur fisherman, hopefully to one day fishing on the Elite Series. I also make a ton of how-to instructional bass fishing videos on my channel. So if you wanna see any of that stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. But today we are practicing. I was out here last weekend and there's no footage from last weekend because I did not catch a single fish. But hopefully today we can turn it around and figure something out for the tournament, which literally starts tomorrow. So we have about nine hours to get something done today. I am fishing two circuits this year for the Leave It On The Scales series. So the first one is gonna be PA Bass Nation. So today there's three events for PA Bass Nation. The way it works is you take your best two out of three finishes, top seven in Angler of the Year points get to go to the state team then they pull three others from a last chance tournament at the end of the year. Those top 10 people move to a regional. The winner out of those 10, highest finisher at that regional, you don't have to win the tournament, but you just have to beat the other nine guys, goes to the national championship. There's one person from each state, so 50 anglers. Top three go to the Bassmaster Classic. Top three also get their Bassmaster Opens entry fees paid for, and the winner gets to go to the Elite Series. So that is ultimately the goal and you can do this in any state. It cost me $500 to fish for the full year. Doesn't matter what your boat is, you just have to get out there and fish. Matty Wong, he was one guy that won last year. He won it out of like an 84 Ranger. So no graphs, anything. He still won the national championship and he's on the Elite Series today. So anybody can do this and I'm showing you that in this series here. And then the other one is going to be a team tournament with my dad. I've had never fished tournaments with my dad until last year. He enjoyed it, so we're gonna fish a whole team series together this year. The championship, the winner gets a Ranger Z518, and that will allow me to go fish the Bassmaster Opens next year if we are to win that. So we'll update you more on that one in those series coming up in future episodes, but today we gotta to get to practicing and hopefully find some fish on Racetown here today. So follow along, I'm gonna walk you through how I practice, what I'm breaking down throughout the day. Water temperature's 43 degrees, so it is pretty cold, but that doesn't mean they're not gonna bite. So let's get after it, we'll walk you through it, we'll go fish the tournament, you'll see that. And at the end of each one of these episodes this year, I'm going to do an in-depth breakdown of everything I caught my fish on in the tournament with the baits, the links, everything. So if you are coming to one of these bodies of water in the future for another tournament, you can buy these same baits and hopefully have the success or failure that I do based on these episodes here. So let's get after it. Trying to stay relatively quiet because there's a couple boats around me, but that is a three pound smallmouth. We're gonna go ahead and let her go real fast. And we are gonna get back to fishing. That is the first fish of the day. I was just slow rolling this Kytec down this point here. There's just like a little shelf that sticks out compared to the rest of this bluff wall. There's just a little bit of a point where some rocks have fallen in the water. I was just slow rolling it down this bluff. And that is my first bite in two days of fishing out here. And it has taken a long time today to get to that point. I started fishing at 6.30 and it's 8.30. So I've been fishing for two hours without having anything touch this. But maybe that's a clue to the next one. I don't know. He was kind of out off the bank. So we'll kind of fish our swim bait out a little bit further. Let's see if we can get a couple more bites. All right, again, we're gonna get her back quick. Three and a quarter pounder before anybody sees. We just had two bites. We'll talk about it here in just a second. Let her go. So we finally, we've been fishing down the lake for most of the day. We caught that one fish and that was it. I left. I went up the river, found warmer water, but I could not get any fish to bite. I was trying to fish for largemouth, just trying to catch some fish. Couldn't figure anything out. So we came back down lake. We're about mid lake right now. Went back to the swim bait. This is my confidence bait. You guys know it. I throw this thing religiously. It catches smallmouth all the time. I picked it up and I'm like, I'm just gonna, I just, what I caught the fish on earlier, 
I'm gonna slow roll it as slow as I can. The water's cold. And if I can get a couple bites, it'll tell me everything I need to know. The first bluff I pulled up on, I just missed one. It balled the tail up and I missed the hook set, but it felt like a big one. And then I just caught that three and a quarter pounder less than 50 yards apart. I'm gonna keep trolling down here a little bit, maybe get one or two more bites. And then after that, we're gonna move on and try and find some more bluffs. But I think we might have figured out a pattern. There we go. That's another one off the same bluff. Go ahead and clear that out. We got eight, eight and a quarter pounds and I lost a big one. So we should be in pretty good shape if we could do this again. And that was three fish off this bluff in a span of a hundred yards. So now we're gonna go try and find as many bluffs as we can like this. It has very steep banks, but the key is this point right here where this log is coming down. As if it's just a straight bluff, there's no fish on it. But if it has little points like that, every point on this bluff right here had a fish on it. So we're gonna leave this one be because apparently there's quite a few of them on this stretch here and go see if we can find something else like it but we're going in the right direction. All right, so that is gonna do it for our day of practice, but that is not the end of the video. We are gonna head in, load the boat up, go to the pre-tournament meeting, and then next scene, we will be out on the water getting ready to fish this tournament. All we have to work off of is those couple bites, so we'll see what we can do. It's getting windy and cold, and I do not feel like being out here much longer. I've lost a bunch of my swim baits and my jig heads, and those are the only things I can get bit on, so I'm gonna save them for tomorrow. I'd rather lose them on tournament day, trying to find new fish, than just keep fishing places out here that I could use for tomorrow. I think I have a little bit figured out, but you're gonna get to watch me tomorrow try to put the rest of the puzzle pieces together during the tournament. We're gonna start where we caught those three, I think, and then we'll go from there. So let's go load the boat up and we'll see you tomorrow. Fish. Yep. He's small, but he'll start. You can just set him down in the bottom there. Thank you, sir. Yep. He choked on that. You're not the ones that fit yesterday, though. Dad Stark broke the ice, bro. Yep. Maybe, if he's 15. Look at that. We didn't blank. Huh? We did not blank. Let's try out my first fish mode. Yeah. Where did the big ones go in here? There's one. That's a good one. Yep. Oh my gosh. Gosh. She's not quitting. No. Come 
Oh, girl, I need you. Yes. Hammered it too, right off that log. Okay, we're on to something now. Now we both get one more and we're good. One more. And we can save our day. All right, so we had, all right, so I didn't get weigh in on video there. We ended up weighing in two fish, the large mouth and the small mouth that you saw me catch. They weighed 6.38 pounds and we finished pretty much middle of the pack, probably closer towards the bottom. Um, most people had three, which is where that hurt me. Literally a two pounder would have put me up closer to the top. And if I would have lost that big one early in the day, I probably would have been right up there where I needed to be for this finish. Fortunately, like I said with Bass Nation, you get to drop your lowest finish. We didn't want to drop this one, but we're going to have to drop this. And we're really going to have to catch them at the Chesapeake and Erie coming up in the next two episodes. But before we get to the Chesapeake episode, which would be the next Bass Nation one, we will have a one on Mosquito Lake coming up. That's for the X series. Like I said, we'll talk more about that in episode two, which will be coming up at the beginning of May. But as promised, we're gonna do a recap of everything I caught my fish on through this tournament, even though I didn't kill them. If you're ever going out to Raise Town Lake, these are gonna be the baits that you're gonna to wanna to have. I wasn't on them very good, but if you run into the fish or happen to find them, or maybe the conditions are a little bit different, I was fishing a little bit behind where the fish were. In about two weeks, these baits will be killing them out there at Raystown, or if you find where the fish are loaded up at right now. So let's go ahead and run through what we caught them on. Another thing I wanna mention before we jump into the recap here, every video is gonna have a recap at the end, but I'm gonna be a little bit more detailed in this one, solely because I wasn't as detailed in the video. I was rusty, I haven't been filming on the water footage for a very long time. In the future episodes, what I'm gonna try to do more of is actually break down my decisions on the water. Rather than you just seeing fish catch, cut to another fish catch, cut to another fish catch, I wanna explain what I'm doing. In practice, that first smallmouth that I caught, that was my fifth spot I hit that day. That was the first clip you probably saw in today's video. So that's not really what I wanna do. I wanna show more of my decision making on the water and help you guys understand what I'm doing so that you can catch more fish on the water. During the tournament, I never fished for largemouth in practice or had any success with it, but I knew a bank that had wood on it, and when that sun gets up, those largemouth will push up under those logs to warm up because the water's much warmer up there. I went and threw a jerkbait down that bank, my co-angler caught a five pound largemouth, and I caught a four pound largemouth. So decisions like that, I need to do a better job explaining it. Bear with me, I will be getting better at this and working hard on it. But for now, let's go ahead and run through the breakdown. So. As you saw, most of my fish, all of them in practice, and a lot in the tournament, even some short fish, came on a swim bait. This is a Kytec 3.3. I was throwing either Sight Flash or Electric Shad. Those are my two go-to colors if you've seen my videos in the past. And I was throwing it on my homemade 3 8 ounce ball head jig with a 2 aught hook in it. That's like my go-to setup for smallmouth little finesse swim bait. We'll be doing some videos on this here shortly in the next month because the fish will be eating this even more. But that is the setup I was using. The 3 8 was the key to get it down to the bottom and fish it really slow. I was fishing this bait down in 20, even 30 foot of water. Not something I typically do. Usually I'm using a quarter ounce fishing it less than 20 foot. That was not the case. These are very steep bluff walls on Racetown. You gotta use like a 3 8 ounce to get it down there. And if you go and use this, make sure you take a lot of jig heads because as you saw, I went through a lot of them. The setup I had this on was a Kistler KLX 7 foot medium heavy with a Shimano SLX DC and I had 12 pound straight fluorocarbon. That's what I was running. Those fish run pretty big on Raystown, so I went with the bigger fluorocarbon. I also went to a bait caster. Usually I fish this on a spinning rod. I went with the bait caster so when they hit it that deep down and you have that much line out, you can get a good hook set and get those fish in and you still, as you saw, even lose a few in that case. So definitely do a bait caster over spinning rod unless you're going with braid. You could probably get away with the spinning rod then, which is what I usually do anyway, uh, but I just felt more comfortable with the bait caster there. 
And then the decision that led to me not having a complete failure of a tournament was to go throw a jerk bait on some logs. And like I said, when that sun gets up, those largemouth will push up under those logs on Raystown. If you have a very calm day in the spring, hot, sunny, that water gets warmer, shallower. That water went up six degrees on that bank since the last time I was there about a week and a half ago. And that warmth made those largemouth move up. And that is when I went to the jerk bait. I was throwing a Rapala Shadow Rab Deep in, I think this is called Elite Blue. I had the jerk bait rigged up on my Kistler Helium 6.9 Light Medium Heavy. I just did a video on this jerk bait setup. It is literally the most awesome jerk bait setup I have ever used in my entire life. It's super light to fish with, but you can still land big fish like we did in today's video. This is a Kistler Series 1 bait casting reel, and I also had straight 12 pound fluorocarbon on there. I was fishing around that brush. I wanted to make sure that if I hooked a bass, got me in that brush, I could get it back out or if it rubbed against any of it. Looking at my line right here where I was fishing my jerk bait, there's a little bit of fray right in front here. And maybe if I was fishing eight or 10 pound tests like a lot of guys do, I might actually broke that fish off when I got it close to the boat. So that was my jerk bait setup. Those were the two combos and baits that got it done out there. If you're going out to Raystown, make sure you have a jerk bait that goes eight foot deep in a natural shad color and some of those swim baits in a 3 8 ounce size and a 3.3 and you'll get the job done. I hope you guys enjoyed today's first episode of the Leave It On The Scale series, kind of setting up the season, giving you guys all the details on what these tournaments are and what I'm doing here. Unfortunately, it was not the finish we were looking for, but hopefully we'll bring it back at the Chesapeake and be able to get right back on track. So if you want to check out any of last year's Leave It On The Scales videos, I will leave the playlist right here for you to check out and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. So thanks for watching.